Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for another Journaling on a Budget Memory Lane. So what we are going to do today is we've been we've done a page in our regular journal section of the book. We worked on our map and so today we are going to work on the lap book side which technically the whole thing is a lap book but Parts of it are more like a journal, and parts of it are going to be more like a lap book, which is lots of interactive parts. So the last, a couple of times ago, I think, we folded up this part to put into our journal to give us a lot of place to work um, on our lap book flips and everything. So we are going to go ahead and we are going to attach this down, and we'll do that right now. And I did make myself a note so that I knew exactly where that went when the time came. Because last time I forgot about it. And it was drying in my atlas and I didn't do anything with it. So I'm going to hook this down with Fabri-Tac because it's a quick grab and it is a, a wet glue. So it's going to hold better than um, a stick glue. So I use stick glues for tags and that type of thing. Um, or if I'm just going to glue something down that's not going to have any type of pressure on it. But because this is going to be, um, it's going to hold up all those folded pages that I just showed you. Um, and they're going to have lots of stuff with them. This way it's going to be nice and solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with the edge of my book here. And I'm going to hold up my spine to make sure that it's not going to hinder the spine at all. I think I need to move this bottom piece over just a little bit. And let's check and see what it looks like here. That looks very good. So there we go. Now we've got that in. Just really give that. Where's my here? Just want to really smooth that down. Move that glue around under there. And make sure that it has really good contact. All righty. So there we go. That's there. That's there. We're going to shut just fine. And also I had a couple of comments on the um, these that they weren't quite even. And actually this one is just a little bit higher than this one. So good catch. Actually probably had I looked at the this part of it I would have noticed it. And that does actually make it look a little bit um a little bit higher but part of it is because the blue dot that's under here goes sideways like this and the blue dot that's under here goes up and down like this and so we actually see more of the blue dot here than we do here and that makes it look even more uneven than what it really is but if i line up the bottom of the books you can see that it's a little bit uneven but they're in there. I could dig that out of there and try and put one a little lower. It would not be as sturdy. And um, so we're just going to leave it like it is. Sometimes things just happen that way. And you have to just roll with it. By the time we put the strings and stuff in there, it won't be too noticeable. So I thought we would start by just working on this back page here. And I have, I got some, um, they're like invitation cards at Goodwill and it came with these are like five and a half by eight and a half along with an envelope and then it had some small ones they were actually like put together like this perforated and you just took them apart and some envelopes to go with those and so I thought we would work with these now they're white and boy are they stark white and I don't do well with white but they're kind of perfect for what I want to do here so we're just going to see what we can do with them. Now, I have played with a couple of them to kind of try and see what I wanted to do because I, you know, I knew kind of what I wanted to do, but I wanted to see how it looked and how it would work. So I wanted to put a piece of it here to cover up 
this part of the lap book. And then I thought that I would put a pocket down here and I did not like the way that this overlaps. And then I thought that I would put one of the small envelopes. I thought about the big envelope, but that was just too much for me. And so then I thought the small envelope might work well if I put it here and lined it up with the top. And I want to make sure that this is short enough so it doesn't catch that. And um, so that this envelope will open up like this. But when I put tags in here, because this is going to be, this is just going to be decorative. This is going to be a pocket. But So when we put a tag in the pocket, it will hold that envelope closed. So that's kind of what we're going to do here. And then we're going to just have to see what we can do to kind of make things match. I've grabbed out some distress inks. I've grabbed out antique linen, uh, walnut stain, and tea dyed. And then I also got out, because we've got some reds and oranges here, Tattered Rose, which is which is not a real bright red, and Wild Honey, which is not a real bright orange. So hopefully, because I don't want them to be overpowering. Then what I did was, I went ahead and I embossed, I like embossing the envelopes. I think that that makes them really pretty. So I embossed this envelope. And when I did it, I had my pressure too high. And so if, you, if you're if you embossing something and your pressure is too high, what will happen is that embossing folder in spots can cut through your paper. Let's see how we've got this little, and I don't want it to be that weak um, because eventually that will kind of come apart. So um, I embossed another one. And so I embossed this one and not thinking the flap is on the wrong side because the flap has to attach here so it would be upside down so this one the flaps on the right side and i did not overdo it on the pressure so this one turned out nicely so we're going to put this one right here but we're going to kind of get these figured out size wise first and then put some color on them and then we'll attach them in. So I, I want this one to be here. And so this one, let me see here. If I put this envelope here, and this is going to be here. So that will work fine because this is going to be attached down completely. So then that will work. The size of this will be okay. And then our pocket will be down here. Put, line it up right with the bottom of this piece here. And this one's going to be lined up right there with the edge of the page on the back of the book. And so this one is a little bit too tall because I want to be able to put things into it. So if I put it on top of the envelope, the envelope won't open. And if I put the envelope on top of it, I can't put tags in there. So this is going to have to be a little bit shorter. And so I'm going to do that right now, even though this is not the piece that we're going to use. But just so that I know that I've got about the right size when I cut the next one. So this one's going to go on here this. This is going to line up with that manila paper. And then this is going to line up here, which it will be on top of that one. It's going to line up there. And that gives me a little bit of a gap there. So that is what I'm looking for. Okay. Now, this is ready to be colored. This one is a little bit too wide. And what I think I want to do is I think I want to try and line up these lines at the bottom like this. And so if I'm going to do that, if I line it up here, leave the little line, this line and this line line up, so if I take this part off, 
then that won't look so funny that it's just, I don't want it coming up out of the middle of the pocket, whether it's like that or like that, I don't like that. So, the bottom, I'll leave the wide piece on the bottom. So I have a few more of these here. <coughs> Excuse me. Alrighty, and then this one, I'm gonna cut this off, but when I cut that off, What's going to happen is, if I cut, I want to cut it off right next to the silver line. And if I do that, then I'm missing um, this here. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut it off next to the, cut one off next to the silver line. Let's see, I want it to be this line here. So I want to keep the little one. I'm gonna, I guess I don't have to flip it upside down. They're the same either way. All right, so... Hopefully, that's where I want it. There's a little bit of white left, so I'm going to just take off just a sliver. Alrighty. So this is going to go this way. Like this. Just like that. Okay, so we need to know how wide this is because we're going to put it on top of there. So that is two and a half and one eighth. So that's two and five eighths is how wide that needs to be. And that's going to go from this way. So I need two and five eighths. So there's two and four eighths. And we're going to go like half of that. Next quarter. And see how that is. So this is going to fit, because these are eight and a half by five and a half, it's exactly the same height as my eight and a half by 11 paper. So that is going to fit right on there, just like that. Okay, that looks good. And then we're going to have this one. But we're going to we're going to butt this right up here, aren't we? Yes. So because we're going to butt it up there, but, you know, that's kind of got that little thing there. What we'll do is we'll slide it underneath and then line those up. So we'll put this one on first and then line those up like that. And then it will be more solid on that edge. I could put a little bit of glue right there, but I would rather glue it you know, like this much. Now I have to decide, I'm thinking that we want to let's see, line these up. I'm trying to think of what do I want over here? And do I want it to just be the little silver line on the edge? which I'm going to cut that down so we can see what that looks like. Cut it right, because if I want, I'm not sure if I want the little silver line on the edge or if I want the little silver line and then the big one. So if I want the big one, it's, I'm going to have to have a different one anyways. All right, so if we put this one here, line it up with the bottom of the paper, and then put this one on top. And line those up like that. That looks pretty good because we've got the little line here and the little line there. So that kind of goes together. But let's try what will it look like if we have... Let me see. Let's cut this down a little bit. And what does it look like if we have it? With the 
both lines there. So we've got both lines here and both lines here and both lines at the top. I do think I like that better. Now, I'm not so sure if this one is going to be, I'm going to, might have to cut off a little off the top. So I'm going to put this right here, right where it's supposed to be, and then put this up here to see. And actually, that is the right width. So, now, before we put them in the book, let's give them some color. So, how do we want to do this? Um, okay, this is this one and that one and that one. Make sure I get all the rest of them out of the way so I'm doing the right one. Pull this over a little bit. We have a piece of parchment. And we don't have to worry about this at all because this will be covered in, you know, another session. All right, so we have to kind of decide because we've got her underneath. Oh, before I even forget, I want to trim off the gum side of the envelope right there. because I don't have to have that much to glue it on. So let's just get rid of it, and then we'll have a much smaller area glued on there. And I think I'm gonna round these corners too while we're at it. And you don't have to have a corner rounder to round corners. Remember, you can just um, round a corner on a piece of cardboard and then just use that on both sides of whatever, or all four corners, however many corners you have, and you'll have your rounded corners. Okay, so that's gonna go there. And she's she's got lots of reds and oranges and everything. So let's, um, I'm trying to think. Let's do a little bit of the tea dyed because that's kind of my medium brown. The walnut stain is very dark, and then the, um, I think that the other one, what is the other one? Antique linen, I think, is kind of light, so let's just put some of the tea dyed on there. And then we'll come in and put a little bit of orange and a little bit of red. And I got this brush at the Dollar Tree. They're a dollar. You have to, I had to wait a while to get it. They had a small one that I tried. It's a little bit too small. This is the biggest one that they have at the Dollar Tree. Um, but it works really well. And so if you want to get these kind of brushes, you know, check out the different places in the makeup sections instead of the craft section, and they will probably be a bit cheaper. They It was when I got mine. Um, because it, when I got mine, they were like all the rage... And they were quite expensive at the at the craft store. So we'll just get some of the orange in here. And then we'll come in with a little red. And then if we want, we could highlight it with a little gold. I did bring some gold luster out. I'm not sure. sure if this this pinkish is quite red enough or not but I can always come back in and put a darker red on top of it if I decide I don't like it actually I think it is turning out okay and usually when you use these until they kind of aren't letting any color off anymore you can go right to the next color. It does, you're using it does pretty much take off all of the color. It doesn't really leave a lot of color on the brush. And 
And let's do the other side too. The other side's gonna be just the opposite because this is debossed and the side, we, the side that we just did was embossed. These are nice as far as they don't tend to leave as many marks. A lot of times, um, you know, if you're using a sponge, um, it kind of, if you're not careful where you touch it to start with, when you have a lot of ink on your sponge, um, it will leave a really strong line. And the nice thing about these is they kind of don't do that. So that is, that works out really well. Okay, let's try a little bit more of the orange then. And you do want to make, ooh, <laughs> that was a little bit silly of me to go right straight to the paper with that. That ink must be a little bit strong where my pink ink doesn't have a whole lot left. All right, so let me come over here and let's do it on the paper over here. Oh yeah, that orange was really, really. So we're gonna try and put in a little bit. The distress inks are meant to blend together. So, a lot of times you can blend it back just a little bit. And a touch of the tea dye. Yeah, this, is, this one is pretty dried out too because it's my favorite color. So our back is a little bit darker than our front. That's okay, you're not gonna see them at the same time. And the other thing is, is that this book is quite dark. So that will blend those together even better. Make them, might make it look a little better. Okay, so we've got that. And this is gonna go here. And then when you open it up, I'm gonna just kind of put those, those colors are gonna be by each other. So that I think looks pretty good. I know it's kind of hard for you to see because I'm over, but so I think we're gonna call that good except for, do we need this a touch darker? I don't think so. And then let's, I have this is Gold Rush Deco Art Metallic Luster. And, ooh, okay, so this one is nice and still smooth. I noticed that I have quite a few of these different ones. Um, and some of them are all dried out. And so all I did was spray them with a little bit of water, let it sit for a few minutes, and then just, and lightly rub your finger across it if you want to just highlight something so that you don't wind up with too much on your hand and, and I kind of make sure that my hand's moving before I touch the paper to try and not get a big smudge of gold. So in this, just kind of takes some practice. When I first started doing this, I watched people highlighting things like this and, and it turned out really pretty good. And then I tried to do it and it was very, you know, I had lots of very dark spots. So, and, and literally it is just a matter of kind of practice. And again, instead of just putting your finger on there and then starting to move, you'll wind up with a dark spot. Just start moving your finger before you touch down on the paper. And that really helps to not get that big dark spot. And you'll always have a little bit more where you first start because you've got more on your finger, obviously. Maybe just a little bit more up here. And there we go.
just a nice little shine on top. I'm not going to put any on the back. And that piece is done. Now I'm going to grab a paper towel. Oh, excuse me. I'm just going to get a little bit. Let's get it a little bit wet. And... Alrighty. So that's that piece. So that's going to go here. This is going to go here. And I was thinking maybe I might stencil on this piece. Or should I just color it and leave it as a writing spot? I think maybe I will put a little color on it and then maybe put like a stencil up the side um, so that there's still some room to, yeah, some room to write on. So let's do that and we will use our same colors. So let's start with the brown. And you can see, see there's still a little bit of round spots there because of, I was pushing a little bit hard right there. And once you get spots on your paper like that, like marks, they're very hard. You really, they're very hard to get rid of. So you just kind of play with it a little bit and until you get it to a point that you like the way it looks, but it's still going to kind of be there. But maybe you can by using another color or something, you know, blend it in a little better. Or there are times where I had some marks that I couldn't get rid of and I didn't like the way it looked, so I just used other colors to make the same kind of mark. You know, like if I had a straight line kind of because I was using like the makeup sponges, I would just use my other colors and kind of make sure that they made a straight line on there too. Then it kind of looked like it was on purpose. Okay, so be careful with this one. because this is being glued down um, it doesn't matter to me what the back looks like that's why I did the envelope first because I knew we were going to see both sides of it I'm just darkening up this edge because it had some dark spots and some not dark spots and so I just kind of wanted to make the whole edge a little bit dark but not really part of it was pretty much the orange that was on there so I thought I would add the pink okay that's gonna go right there and those do look nice together and then I thought maybe let's see I had some leaves here ivy I think I like the ivy. That's not the ivy. That's the ivy. And maybe put those on there since the orange is so strong. Let's put them on there in orange. And do I want to go all the way up? Because it's not going to stick to the silver. Maybe I will start and stop at the silver. Hopefully this is the orange. I don't know if they've changed things because I've had my distress inks forever, but they don't have their names on the back. So it's very, sometimes it's like, I hope that I didn't put the wrong top on it. And then I, I haven't done it yet, um, but I'm just waiting for myself to do that someday. And then I noticed some of them, um, like on the back, like let's say it's frayed burlap. 
some of them would have like an FB on the back. It didn't say frayed burlap, but it said FB. So, you you know, depending on what colors you had out there, you knew it was frayed burlap. So, but they don't all have that either. And I got them in D stashes, so I don't know, like maybe if they were knockoffs or something. I don't have any idea. They don't look like knockoffs or act like knockoffs, but whoops. All righty. I like that. It blends in kind of nicely. There is still room to write here because you can write on distressing. But it gives it just a little something. So that's going to go there. That's going to go there. And now see those were white. And now look at how nicely they look in the book. Awesome. I'm happy with that because I was really kind of nervous about how it was going to look. So now for this one. Okay, why does that now, let's see, this goes here, and this goes, we're, this is going to be on the top, isn't it? That goes there. We figured that this was going to be a little bit on the top, because we made this as wide as our cream color. Okay, I thought that it looked like it was too tall. But I think it's going to be okay. That right at the top. Line this up. There is a little bit of a gap there. That's what I definitely needed. I needed a gap to be able to tuck into. So we're going to do this the same color as this. Let's just do that. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything on here. Or not. Now this one is also going to be glued down. It's going to be a pocket. I think this is the pink one. I think. Oh, maybe it's... I don't know. Yep, that's the pink one. This color pink is very kind of darkish. And then I still probably have a little bit of the other colors on this because I haven't wiped it off at all. Okay, that's the orange. I was thinking that that was the brown. And always remember that that really does make a difference if you get a new Distress Ink and you're so used to kind of like pushing down hard a little bit because you don't have a lot of ink on your whatever you're using. Um, remember that the new ones are going to really be dark and they're going to soak right up into whatever you're using really fast. So you have to have a light hand with them then. I really like these three colors together. I wasn't sure what I was going to think, but it was what matched the book. And I like it. Okay. And the silver and the gold go good together because Burl Ives tells us it does. And Rudolph. I always liked that song. All right, so this one's going to go underneath here. This is going to go here. And then we're going to have tags to go in there. So... I think I like the way that looks, and I think I'm leaving this for writing space. I know that for sure. I might put, like, a sentiment or a word here at some point. So I think that right now I am going to leave that 
just like it is. I don't think I'm going to put any leaves or anything on it. Okay, so to start with then, I'm thinking that we need to glue down the pocket first. And again, I am going to use the um, Fabri-Tac. You can also use three in one is what I always used to use. And mostly I use whatever I have. I use what I get at a decent price. Um, and let me tell you about glues. I have a drawer full of glues and a lot of them are dry. So don't overdo it when you go to get glues. And if you have a glue that you like, kind of stick to it. You don't need to, you know, like have every glue in the book. If you like the one you're using and it's working well for you, don't go ahead and get everything that everybody else has just because everybody else has it. Because then you're just going to wind up with so many glues. Okay, I'm going to bring this glue over to about here. Because I don't want things sliding back in this pocket underneath the other side. Which I don't really think it would do, but it could, so. A bit more across the bottom, a little bit more over here, and then I'm going to line it up with... The edge of the paper, not the edge of the book. And the bottom. There we go. So we have the, this is paper on the back cover of the book. So I don't want to line it up with the outside edge. Because I'm going to line up the envelope with that piece of paper. So I want them to, these two to line up with each other. Alrighty, so there we go. And now that is going to be our pocket. And now let's see, I'm not sure if our things will fit there, but if they don't fit, these little cards don't fit. And it is going to be a little bit big because this is going to be covered up. So we'll wind up cutting them off a bit so that they fit. I thought maybe I would put two in there. Not positive. Let's see, our envelope is going to lay over top of this, so this has to go down next. But I hope if you're making your own journal that you're really having a good time making it. I have really been enjoying doing this journal. I have not touched this book for a few weeks. I was ahead by three weeks in case I had to go to my daughter's, and I did not have to go to my daughter's, but then a lot of things came up. Craft show with my niece, and the farmer's market started a little earlier than I thought it was going to, and then my van broke down, and they keep the parts on back order, and just lots of things going on, so I kind of got a little behind on um making my videos mostly because there were so many other things to do and I knew I was three weeks ahead so I kind of let it go but and then today it really took me some time to like get into the mood to start working on it and now I'm like having a really good time sometimes you just have to I, I literally did have to make myself get started and sometimes you have to do that. You just kind of lose your mojo a little bit. And so where's my little presser foot? So then you just have to kind of get back into it again. And once you do, a lot of times that just brings you, the second you get started, your mojo comes right back. Now what I'm going to do, because we're not going to see these pages, but when I put something on here, you very well might see that cream colored line and so I'm just going to go in there and try and kind of make that colored to match what's here. Better that it matches one side or the other than <laughs> the dogs are letting me know that they think I should come in there with them. 
there we go. And it doesn't have to be neat or anything because it's going to be covered up over here. There we go. So now we hopefully won't have a big tan line between this page and this page. So see, that looks really cute. It looks really cute with our lady here. And so now all we have to do is glue this down, which is going to glue right on there. And again, right back with the Fabri-Tac. Have to wipe it off because it was oozing out. But yes, I started using Fabri-Tac because everybody was using it and they were talking about how wonderful it dries and everything. And when I got it and used it the very first time, the smell, the way it works, everything is just like the Beacons 3-in-1. This is Beacons Fabri-Tac. So the thing is, is that more than likely it's almost the same thing, if not the same thing. And they just make it in one package for people that work with fabric and in another package for people that work with paper crafts. Because to me, they're the same. Now, I've been getting Fabri-Tac since then because for a while I was having a hard time finding the three-in-one. And since I'm not hoarding glue anymore, um, I make myself use it up before I get another one. So there we go. And I could maybe even, because we've got this little bit of a line here for the flap, but we could put something there. Oh, wait, I did grab out. Although I don't know, it might not work, but let's see. I want to cover this up. I forgot that's, you know, since she's like a dancer. Um, does it say, I can't quite read it. I have my glasses on. I thought you know, very like sparkly maybe. I thought maybe, and this is not super thick. I thought maybe I'd put one of these on there. Although that is an envelope, so it's a pocket. Oh, what are you talking about it being a pocket? One of these will fit in there. Get that writing book out of the way a little bit. When you do emboss them, they kind of stick together a little bit. You kind of have to pull them apart the first time or two. And it's kind of catching on the embossed part in there. I don't want to rip it, so I'm just going to take it slow the first few times and make sure that it... So there we go. Now that is another journaling spot. I like that, and I'm... Not sure. I'm going to round the corners because it makes it easier to put them in and out. Maybe. Do I want to color it or do I want to just leave it white? Whoops. Because it's going to be in there so it doesn't have to be colored. Hmm. And we could put a picture in here and then have journaling space on the back. For now, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna put it in there so that I have it in there, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Because I just don't know if I wanna make it all colored or like let it be a little different. That's the hardest thing sometimes. I feel like everything has to be matchy-matchy and it really does not need to be. Okay, I need to find the other, there's one, and since I, I'm going to have to cut these down, so I'm just going to cut the edges off right away. I'm going to do two for there, and I think I'm going to cut the white off the top. I 
and just make it silver all the way around. And I'm going to round the corners. There we go. Oh, that one I still need to cut some off the top. I guess I should not have done them together. I should have done them separately. I really wasn't thinking. Maybe put like a little circus picture or something in there. Or maybe a stamp, on, you know, a pretty quote stamp would be nice in there. And you have those two in there. And for now, I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave them. Because I think maybe a nice quote stamp would be nice. And then maybe just color just around the outside. Actually, I think I'll do that right now since I have the colors out and I know what colors I used. I mean, sometimes you might want to take notes as to what colors you used in case you want to go back and do something later. Um, but I think what I'm going to do, and I forgot about this, but we'll have to see. Um, I need a piece of paper. I'll use this. Because I want to do the edges, but I don't want it to get in my center. And I don't want to use the parchment because this is the orange, so be very light-handed. Um, I don't want to use the parchment because I do want to use the back side for writing. And so I don't want to get the ink all over the back side. And the nice thing about having the silver on here is I can line up in the middle of the silver and I'm not going to be in the way. Whoops. Of where I'm trying to get my ink, but I'm also not going to get it on the other part because it's not going to stick to the silver. Okay. Am I getting on the bottom? No, good. Kind of wanted to try not to move it much so that I wasn't getting the ink from the paper, but it doesn't come off the paper as well as it comes off the parchment because parchment is non-stick, so things are meant to come off of there. I'll get a little bit of the pink on here, and I think I might not even do any of the tea dye. I think I might just do this, just the orange and the pink. And that will tie it together with the rest of it, but it doesn't have to be all so, so orange and pink or so colored. Give us a little bit of contrast because you can get just a little too much. There, that looks really pretty. And I like that. And that white's going to look very nice like that. So we'll just get this other one done really quickly. I don't do anything really quickly, but. And I think I like how this one is turning out. And really it's, that page is pretty much done kind of have to decide how I want to do up the tags, but a lot of times I put tags and stuff in the area that I want them, but they're not finished tags. Um, because, you know, sometimes I just don't know how I want to do the tags. And if I'm not sure how I want to do something, 
I usually don't do it right then because otherwise I'm just doing it just to get it done. And then later on, I think, oh, why did I do that? I would have rather have done this. Give yourself some time to think about how you want to do it. And if you're just not sure right away, don't worry about it right then. Come back to it later. And I'm probably going to take the one out of the envelope and do that one too. But I'll do that one off camera because you've just seen me do these two. You don't need to watch me do another one. Alrighty, so there we go. And now we have these and I really think they might be nice with a stamp. So do we want to put a piece of this on here? Now that I'm thinking that we've got the cards, I'm thinking it might lift that envelope up a little bit too far. All right, let's, where's some scissors? I'm just going to cut the plastic. Because I want to see if, how well it will lay down in order to put the, Um, tags in the pocket. Okay, so if this is here, like that. Okay, those still fit in there without too much trouble. Now, what about trying to get this one in? Well, that one does too. That one works good too. So I think that we will. Why not put that there? Because I think that's really cute. I wonder if we need it that way or... I think I like it the way that I had it. So let's see. We'll start right here. Stop right here. <clears throat> all righty. And I think, I hope they're all hooked together. Yeah, they are. I say, if they're not all hooked together, I'm not going to put all those little tiny pieces together myself. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so there, I like how this turned out. Well, at least we're almost at the end because now I have a tickle. But there. <coughs> oh, I need to drink a coffee. Okay. So we have a writing spot here. We're going to do something here and here. We've got a couple of journaling cards. We have an envelope that we can put things in along with the journaling card. Pretty picture with a little bit of bling. I'm going to take this one out so I don't forget to do that one. And I think I'm going to do it just like I did this, except I'll do both of the rims and leave just the center. And I think that that turned out really nice. So it's all about just playing with it. Oh, I hope that you guys could see what we did here. So let me pick it up a little bit too. But there we go. So for today's page, we have the gold on our envelope. And we've got our tags here, pocket, writing space. And then you open up the pocket. And we've got this pretty picture with our little bit of bling there. And we'll have another journaling card inside the envelope. 
So I hope that you did enjoy today's project. I had fun doing it. Like I said, I haven't done it in a while, and now I'm really excited to get back into it again. Thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. If you get a chance, leave a thumbs up, watch a commercial. All of those different little things help all of the YouTube creators if you, if you do that for them. So thank you very much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And I hope that each and every one of you has an outstanding day. Bye-bye.